So, and when the place is ready, I can give him the permission also. So today we have, uh, who's going to present today? Uh, Sura and Bushra and Noor? Yes. Okay, so who wants to be the co-host? All of us. Uh, so everyone, everyone of you, everyone has uh, her own slides? Yes. So who's going to start? Me. Who's the first presenter? Me. Sora? Yes. Okay, Sora, I'm making you the co-host. You are the co-host now, so you can share your screen with us and you can start. Yeah, okay, but please make Pusha and Noor also a co-host to save time. You said that they have they have their own presentations. They have their own slides. Yeah, yeah, I know, but just to save time when their turn is coming. Okay, so I'll see if we, I can make all of you co-hosts simultaneous, simultaneously. So this is Bushra and this is Noor. Okay. Yes. Okay, can I start now? Yes, sure. Okay. So last time we are done with the freezer categories and, and, and hit, hit categories. And then today we are going to move to a very, very important topic in, in syntax, uh, uh, phrase structure trees. Yes, sir. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. <clears throat> so hello, everyone. Uh, mm -hmm. so uh, mm -hmm. First of all, we would like to thank you guys for being here today. This is our group presentation and mm -hmm. today we're going to discuss two topics. And these topics are phrase structure trees and phrase structure rules. Before we start our presentation, there are some instructions that we will be glad if you follow them. And these instructions mm -hmm. are, please do not interrupt us while we are speaking. If you have any question, please write it in the chat box. And of course, we'll answer you. Mm -hmm. And if we ask you a question, the same thing, please write your answer in the chat box. And just as a note, you may notice that there are some differences between the book and our presentation. And this is due to that the book is boring <coughs> and we wanted to make it much more interesting and simple. So let's start our presentation. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, the first thing that we're going to discuss is the phrase structure trees. In this part, I'm going to talk about phrase structure relations and define some terms. The very first basic of a tree structures is that trees are generated by rules. So I'm going to use the same tree for all the examples. We have A at the top, then it goes to B and C. B goes to D, E, and F. C goes to G and H. And then H goes to I. So for these rules in the first node, we notice that A splits into B and C. So our rule, we say that A goes to B and C. And that just means that you take A and you split off B and C into two branches. And what about B? B goes to D, E, and F, okay? And C goes to G and H. And finally, H goes to I. So what are we reading on this tree? Well, what we read at the final sentence is D, E, F, G, I. Now, looking at the tree and talking about the structural relations is very important for syntax. So the first thing we need to do is talking about terminology. So we have branch, we have node, label, root node, non-terminal nodes, and terminal nodes. So branches are just the lines 
that split up our nodes. So we can say that A goes to B and C or A branches to B and A branches to C. So there's a branch connecting A and B and a branch connecting A and C. The second important thing is the nodes. And the nodes are all of our terminals and non-terminals for branches. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I, these are all nodes in our tree. We also have labels and labels are the label for the nodes. So the node A is labeled as A, but sometimes we'll see that there are a multi-labeled. So label D might be labeled D and it might be that. E mm -hmm. might be old, F mm -hmm. might be man, G might mm -hmm. be went, and I might be away. So we can Love have, it. thank you. So we can have labels that are words as well. Now the root node, the root node is the top of our tree. So this is the root node, which is A, and terminal nodes are the nodes on the, and terminal nodes are the nodes on the bottom of the tree. So the very bottom of the end of the branches are the terminal nodes. So D, E, F, G, and I are terminal nodes. And finally, non-terminal nodes. And non-terminal nodes are everything else, including the root node. So the terminal nodes are at the very bottom. There's nothing below them. And non-terminal nodes are things that are not at the bottom. So now that we have the basic terminology done, we can talk about how these nodes relate to each other. So domination. And domination here is a really fancy mathematical definition of domination. So X dominates Y. If X is higher in the tree, and you can trace a path from X down to Y. Let's talk about A. What does A dominate? Well, we take a look at A and we take a look at everything below it. So what is below A? B is below A, D, E, and F are below A. So A dominates B, D, E, F. But we can see that C is also below A, G and H are below A, and I is below A. So A also dominates C, G, H, and I. So it dominates everything. Why does it dominate everything? Because A is the root node. So A is going to dominate all other nodes that are below it. What about B? What does B dominate? If we take a look down these branches, can you see my pointer? Mm -hmm. If we take yes. a look down these branches, it dominates D, E, F. So B dominates D, E, and F. So B is technically above in a sense. It is in a higher tier than G and H. So you may, so you may, so you may ask why it does not dominate G and H. Because if you just go down all of its branches, you can never reach G and H just by going down. Therefore, it does not dominate G and H. Okay, what does G dominate? G dominates nothing. And you know the symbol, which is phi, we use it in mathematics to indicate that there's nothing included. So there's nothing below G that it can dominate. G is a terminal node, therefore it does not dominate anything. So that's domination. The other thing we need to talk about is immediate domination. And immediate domination just means that you take a look directly below. So A, what does A immediately dominate? We just take a look down once. So we look at B, we look at C, and then we stop looking. So A immediately dominates B and C. So this is the difference between immediate domination and just domination in general. Domination, we keep looking down as far as we can go. Immediate domination, we look down once and then 
we stop. Now we have some terms and these terms are mothers. So we can say that X is a mother of Y if X immediately dominates Y. And we have daughters and we can say that X is a daughter of Y if Y immediately dominates X. And finally, we have sisters. And we can say that X and Y are sisters if X and Y have the same mother. So A is in the very top tier and B and C come below it. So A is a mother of B and C. And also C is a mother of G and H. Now B and C are sisters and they are also daughters of A. Now, can a node be a mother and a daughter? I'm waiting for your answers. Noor back here, yeah, I see, yes. Okay, <coughs> I can see the chat, so. Okay, yeah, sure it can because as we see that C is a mother of G and H, and it is also a daughter of A. Mm -hmm. Now, finally, G and H are sisters, and they are also daughters of C. I hope that everything is clear. Now I'm going to hand the presentation over to Bushra to complete with you. Thank you. Excellent. Bravo, 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 Sora. I'm happy. I'm proud of you. I'm so happy because of this excellent presentation. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. <clears throat> Can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. Can you see my screen? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you, Sura. Hello, everyone. I am Bushra. Now we are. We will move to our second section, which is phrase structure rules, and we are going to look how the constituents can be represented in a hierarchical system. So let's take a look to this sentence. The professor started the meeting. We know that this sentence is made up of constituents and subconstituents as well. So we know that the is a determiner, professor is a noun, started is a verb, the is a determiner, and meeting is a noun as well. And we know that the plus meeting together form one constituent called a noun phrase. And the started plus the form a larger constituent called a VB. And here again, we have another noun phrase. And all these together form a larger constituent called a sentence. So let's break these in together in a hierarchical form. We have a noun phrase, which consists of a determiner and noun, another noun phrase, determiner and a noun, and the verb phrase includes inside of it the entire noun phrase and the verb started. Mm -hmm. And we have the noun phrase and a verb phrase which form the entire sentence. So we can connect those together and we are going to call that as S, which is a sentence. Now maybe you will ask, how do we know what possible branching trees we may come up with? Are there any limits? For example, our noun phrase consists of a determiner and a noun. Is that the only thing that it can consist of? Are there any parts that are obligatory? And are there any parts that are optional? To find out, we are going to talk about something called phrase structure rules. Mm -hmm. And now we know how sentences are built. So let's see our first rule. Our first oh, rule says bravo, that this, Bushra, bravo. Thank you. Our first rule says that the sentence consists of a noun phrase and a verb phrase. Guys, you have to have both a noun phrase followed by a verb phrase in that order in English to have a well-formed acceptable sentence. So let's apply our rule in a tree diagram. The sentence consists of a noun phrase and a verb phrase. Now let's see what goes into a noun phrase. As you know, we refer to the noun phrase with just two letters, N and P. And here we have two questions. We will answer them after we discuss some points. Our first question says that 
what must occur? Our second one, what is optional? The simplest noun phrase we can think of consists of one word. I know it sounds weird that the whole phrase consists of just one word, but this is technically true. So let's say, for example, Agab. <laughs> Agab, of course, is a noun. And this noun here forms the noun phrase entirely. But notice that there's nothing else here along with Agab. What this means is that the only thing that must occur in a noun phrase is a noun. What is optional? Well, everything else is optional. And Bravo. this means Bravo. that they do not have to occur in a noun phrase. And now you kind of get to see why we call it a noun phrase. In the first place, because the only thing that must occur in a noun phrase is a noun. And in most cases, we give the name of the phrase based on what must occur, but not in all cases. And based on what we must, we I think there's a problem with her laptop. It's really... She's going to be there in two minutes. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So, yeah, I wanted to, to write that we can't hear. But I think we still have her. We still have her. She, she didn't leave the meeting. She's, she's restarting her laptop. Restarting? Yeah. No, I think she left. Yeah, she's going to be there in two minutes. Yeah, she will. Before we, this interruption. We, we lost her. Uh, so, yeah. <clears throat> I'm really very, very pleased and very happy of what I, 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 I saw and what I heard. This is really excellent. I'm so proud of you to be able to have such excellent presentation. Really, this is an A range presentation. A range, A. You deserve A for this presentation. Thank so you. really, you're, you're really doing a great job. And I don't exaggerate if I say that this is better than some of the presentations of some of our MA students. You are excellent and inshallah, inshallah, a very, a very good future, a very excellent future, prosperous future is waiting for you. Inshallah, you'll be very successful, all of you. And with hard work, you see that Sora, maybe Sora, you studied in public, uh, public schools in Jordan? Yeah. Yes, the same for Bushra, the same for Noor. With hard work, everything is possible. You know, if almost a native speaker, you feel that almost a native speaker is, is presenting. Yes. Mashallah, everything is, is excellent, well prepared. You prepared the slides, Sora and Bushra, you prepared the slides, Anu? You mean the design? <clears throat> the slides, the PowerPoint the presentations, the arrows, the takes, the, 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 the colors. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, made bravo. it. Yeah, how, bravo. How much time did it take you? Uh, for, uh, more than one week. Yeah, yeah, this is expected. Because this excellent work, uh, uh, of course, needs a lot of time. Needs a lot of time. So what you're excellent. Keep the good work. Keep the good work. Keep this good work, this excellent work even. Thank you. You're very welcome. So do you have any questions until we get Bushra back? No questions? <clears throat> sure. Sora, would you please uh, contact Bushra and see what's going on? Uh, 
uh, yes, I'm contact. I'm contacting with her, and um, she tells you just a minute. Oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah. That's fine. But just we want to make sure that everything is fine. So as as uh, Bushra mentioned that in the sentence we have NP and VP now in a phrase and verb phrase, and. She said, in the noun phrase, we can have a det determiner and noun. And, uh, and P gives det and N. So the sentence gives NP and VP. Now, Busher also added that only the noun. So what is a noun phrase? A noun phrase is a group of words headed by a noun. What is the obligatory element? It is the noun, the head of the phrase. Optionally, we can have everything else can be optional. The, det, the determiner is optional. We can have adjectives, they are optional. We can have propositional phrases, they are optional and so on. The only obligatory element in the NP is the N, the head of the NP. So she used my name. <clears throat> so yes, the noun phrase can be one word. Mainly the phrase is more than one word, but sometimes yes. If it can be the subject or the object in one of noun slots, then it can be an, a noun phrase. So John, Tom, Muhammad, Ali, and so on. These can be, these are nouns, and at the same time, they are NPs. <clears throat> they are NPs, noun phrases. That's why Bushra showed you that ikab is a name, noun, noun, and then also it is an NP. So NP gives N and it gives a cap. Hello, doctor. Bushra, you are back? Uh, sorry, I don't know what happened. No problem. You are back? Uh, yes. Okay. Host, okay. Yes, please. Go ahead. But can you stop sharing? Yes, sure. I was saying while you were uh, trying to get back to the meeting, Bushra, that I'm really happy. I'm really the, the many excellent students that we have in this class. Doctor, we appreciate that. Okay, now mm -hmm. can you see my screen? Okay. Uh, back to our presentation. Uh, we said that uh, Gad here is the head of our phrase. And in this particular case is the only part of the, of the phrase. But notice guys, that not all heads can stand alone. Take for example, the noun man. If we were speaking of the word man in a generic term, like man is a creature, then fine. Mm -hmm. But what I try to say something like man ate the apple. It sounds mm -hmm. a bit funny. So maybe I'm missing something like the, or a man. Bravo. These are what we call determiners and we symbolize it with the letter D. Now the most common determiners are the definite articles the, the indefinite articles uh, a or n. We mm -hmm. can use numbers like one, two, three hundred. Uh, we can use many, most, few, etc. So just by looking at this so far, how would we write the rule of the noun phrase? Mm -hmm. Well, we would say that the noun phrase must consist of a noun and also it may consist of a determiner. Mm -hmm. And this determiner is optional. So we indicate that it's optional by putting it in between two parentheses. Mm -hmm. So let's see if the noun itself is obligatory as we said it was. Now, for example, we can say things like the man is smart. 
but we can never say things like the is smart mm -hmm. because we are missing the noun here. So apparently it looks like the noun is obligatory. Now let's apply our second rule to a hierarchical sector. A noun phrase consists of a determiner and a noun. Hopefully it's not too hard to wrap your head around. Uh, now I'll turn our presentation over Noor and sorry again. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent, Mashara. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. This is really excellent. Thank you so much. Noor, you are already the co-host. Yeah, okay. Can you see my screen right now? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Bushra. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me start by introducing myself. I am Noor, and now we will move on to the to the verb phrase. So let's discover our third rule, which is about the verb phrase mm -hmm. that symbolized by V and P. Well, let's get started with our important question. Number one, what must occur? And number two, what is optional? Mm -hmm. uh, and absolutely, what is optional? Uh, and absolutely, we will know the answers after we explain the rule. Mm -hmm. So here, this is the phrase structure rule for the verb for the verb phrase, which consists of a, an obligatory verb and an optional noun phrase. Then we have a complementizer phrase, and and finally, we have an optional prepositional phrase. Okay, back to the question. Now we notice that what is must occur is the is the head of the verb phrase, which is the verb, and what is optional is everything else. So uh, let's take one big example and apply it in a hierarchical structure, and it's gonna be written in the chat box. Okay, okay. The example is the girl got the mark that she deserves in the exam. Mm -hmm. So. Um, in the top, we um, okay. In the top, we have us, and we know that the sentence is made up of a, a noun phrase and a verb phrase. Um, in this side, as I pointed, okay, uh, the noun phrase is going uh, to be into determiner and a noun. Our determiner here is the, and our noun, our noun here is girl. Okay, but what about the verb phrase, which is our rule? The verb phrase consists of um, the head of the ver the head of the verb phrase, which is, and a noun phrase and a complementizer phrase. Mm -hmm. Our verb here is got, and our noun phrase, as Bushra mentioned, consists of a determiner and a noun. Our determiner here is the, and our noun here is mark. Finally, we have the complementizer phrase, which consists of a complementizer and a sentence. Our complementizer here is that, and our sentence, as we know, made up of a noun phrase and a verb phrase. Going to the noun phrase, we know, uh, okay, going to the noun phrase, um, it consists of a pronoun, which is she, and um, the verb phrase uh, includes verb and a prepositional phrase. Our verb here is deserves and our prepositional phrase um, going to be preposition and a noun phrase. Uh, the preposition here is n and the noun phrase again uh, is determiner and noun. Our determiner here is the and our noun here is exam. Okay guys, don't, okay guys, don't be confused about the complementizer phrase and the prepositional phrase because I am going to talk about um, more about this particular point in a minute. Okay, so let's go to our fourth rule, which is about the prepositional phrase. Okay, this rule says that the prepositional phrase consists of a preposition and a noun phrase, and a noun phrase. So let me um, let me apply it in a hierarchical structure. Okay, here we have a prepositional phrase consists of a preposition and a noun phrase. Okay. Uh, finally, we reach to our last rule, which is about a complementizer phrase. The complementizer phrase consists of um, a complementizer and a sentence. And again, I want to apply it in a hierarchical structure like this. It would be like this. Okay, complementizer phrase consists of a C and S. Okay. Uh, 
<laughs> okay, guys, uh, quest time. There is one question, and the first mm. one who answer this question in the chat box is gonna give him a it's gonna be given a gift. Okay, so uh, are you ready? Let me in the chat box if you are ready or not. Guys, ready? Ruhi, ready? Okay, guys. Okay, no. Okay. Rahaf, yes. Mm -hmm. Malik, okay. yes. The question is. Bravo. Mm -hmm. So how can they answer using the chat? Okay, yeah. So Rahaf, I think Rahaf, right? I think Rahaf, the first one? Yes. Okay, Rahaf, the, the right answer is false because uh, you can't trace a path from X, you can't, sorry. You can't trace a path from X down to Y. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Rahaf, congratulations. You are invited to a good restaurant for a free waffle and a coffee. So enjoy it and uh, send. <laughs> bravo, bravo. To, to what? What's what's the name? Coot? Coot restaurant, doctor. Okay. Okay. Um, what? Nice, 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 nice. Okay. Uh, Rahaf, please send me an email um, to talk about more about the details because I cannot tell you all the details right now. <laughs> okay. Bravo, bravo. Okay. So, thank you. No. Uh, yeah, yeah, doctor. Thank you. Yes. Wait a minute, just. Okay, if you have any questions. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys, just for kidding. Seriously, if you have any questions, send us, please send us an email. There are Sura's email, Bushra's email, and my email. Thank you. Hopefully, everything uh, is clear. Thank bravo. you. Oh, that was really perfect. Bravo, 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 bravo. So I want to hear. Job. I want to hear. I want to hear some feedback from your colleagues. Okay. Uh, guys, what could I say, Doctor? <laughs> that was really perfect, actually. The accent, mm. the, the PowerPoint presentation, everything, the, mm. the, everything is good. Everything is clear. Yes. Really perfect. Thank you so much. Well prepared oh, and well good. presented. Yeah, very nice. Malik, thank you, Qais. Yes, Doctor, I just want to say this was extremely perfect. They were perfect. Everything was also perfect. Thank you. Yeah. So after working for an entire week, to prepare yes. these slides, so it is expected that there is a, that that this is what we get, a perfect presentation. Noor, thank you. What, doctor? Yeah, I just want to say that it was like really well organized, and I really understand really well that I was so impressed. And thank you all. It was like amazing presentation, and I had so much fun during learning, Excellent. and that was really great. Thank you. All. And thank you, Noor. Thank you for even all for your very uh, nice accent also. Where did you study, Noor? Um, In public I, schools or yeah, private public schools? School. Public yeah, schools? No, 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 public school. Yeah. How about you? <laughs> you've, never been, you've never been to an English speaking country? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> no. Sadly. <laughs> yeah. But your, yeah, your accent is excellent. So. Thank you. Yeah, bravo, bravo. Keep, keep, keep developing your, your, your. I mean, it is, it is for me. It is, it is, it is excellent. It is perfect, and uh, just so keep the, the keep this so excellent. These, these, keep, keep this excellent level of proficiency and fluency. Uh, I, I, some of I'm asking, I'm asking students, just to give you a piece of evidence. A real proof that you can be almost a native speaker of English without living in the States or Britain or Australia 
or without having uh, uh, English speakers or American mother or so on. With hard work, only with hard work. No, yeah, can, can, can you tell us quickly, I mean, what, what did you do to improve your accent? Um, actually, I used to watch a lot of interviews for celebrities and I just kept mimicking them and trying mm -hmm. to get their accent and like just repeating what they say and like watch movies without subtitles and try my best to be better all the time. Yeah, so all you need to do is to make actually, your, your ear very sensitive. Yes, Noor? I speak to myself like a lot, try, but only using English mm -hmm. so I can improve myself. Nice, nice, nice. So you need to make your ear sensitive to native speakers. L listen as much as you can to the native speakers. Try to imitate them, the way they speak, their pronunciation, the way they speak, their intonation. And it is nice. I mean, uh, you talk in English if you have uh, a language uh, made. If you don't, you can talk to yourself and and you can practice. I mean, practice makes perfect. And this is what we need. Yeah, it, just for, for Bushra, for Sora, for Noor, they, they were amazing. Amazing. They, 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 they had an, ex an amazing presentation. And not to forget, not to forget Malik's presentation and Rania's presentation and Aya's presentation. So far, we have had excellent presentations. With hard work, everything is possible. OK, so after uh, this excellent presentation, just uh, if you have, do you have any questions after this excellent, very detailed presentation from your colleagues? Please, if you do, ask me. And we can discuss with Sora and Bushra and uh, uh, Noor, we can discuss uh, uh, your questions. So they mentioned everything, S and P, V, P, and the V, P can be only V. So in the exam, if I ask you, the only obligatory element in the V, P is the V. True or false? False. What is the, the only obligatory? The only obligatory element in the VP is V. Okay, yeah. I hear that uh, now. If yes. I'm sorry. True that. So this is true. true. Yes. Yes. True, not false. VP gives V. Good. But also we can have propositional phrase in the VP. The puppet yes. in the garden. So the sentence gives NP that the or N. Puppy and a puppy, then VP, V played, then where in the garden. So this is a propositional phrase. And here we have the head is the P in. And then within the propositional phrase, we have another NP, the garden that N. This is possible. And also for, for transitive verbs, some verbs are transitive. Some verbs are transitive, so we can have an NP, and some verbs can be followed by a complementizer phrase, like the professor hoped. Hoped is the verb, so sentence NP, that and the professor, then VP, V, hoped. Then here we don't have an, uh, I mean, <clears throat> hope something. We know that the whole CP is, as we say in Arabic, في محل مفعول به. But here, that the head the of the object, the head that the students read the chapter. This is a complementizer phrase, and here we can't have NP. We have CP, and the CP rule is that we have C and S, an embedded sentence inside the larger sentence. Remember the embedded clause? He said yes. that, he hoped that, and so on. So here we have the C, the complementizer that, then we have S, and then we go back. S gives NPVP, so S gives NPVP, S gives that, and then the students. <coughs> and then VP, we have the verb bread, and the NP, the object of the embedded clause or the complementizer phrase. Here we have the, the, the chapter. 
these are the phase structure rules and the ones that whether and if are also complementizers in English. I don't know whether I should talk about this. The teacher asked if the students understood the syntax lesson. So whether and if are also complementizers in English. So here we have eight, eight rules. Sentence gives NPVP. The NP gives DIT and N. The VP can be V and NP in the, in the, in the transitive verbs. The verb can be only the verb. The VP can only the verb. John slept. John laughed. The VP can be V and PP, the puppy played in the garden. The VP can be V and CP, like the professor hoped that the students uh, uh, read the chapter. And the PP uh, uh, includes preposition and NP, and this NP is called object of a preposition, and the complementizer phrase gives C and S. Please, you need to. You need to know these rules. You need to learn them. These are the rules that Chomsky and his colleagues started in the 1960s. So they were, they were the beginning. And of course, they, they developed. Uh, I'm sorry that we don't have enough time during this semester because we need to move to semantics. But uh, I think, yeah, uh, this part will be for Qais. Right, Qais? 93 yes, to 95. Yes. So I think, yeah. And then the recursive structure. And then I, I wish that we have enough time because here the internal structure of a phrase is, is we, but this is an introductory course to morphology, to syntax, to semantics. And inshallah, you will have a whole course in syntax and a whole course in semantics. But here you see, this is not everything because later Chomsky, Chomsky, provided or 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 uh, entered or used what was called x bar theory x bar theory so instead of saying npn or np dead dead and n he used np spec spec or specifier of the noun which is the determiner there and then n bar the head and n bar gives n mother and pp complement of NP, which is of James Wessler, for example. Then for the VP, we have the spec of the verb phrase, which is the verb. And then we have in the V bar, we have, sorry, the spec of the verb. And then we have the verb, the V bar, we have the verb sing, and then we have the complement, which is the object, the NP. The, and then a, for the, in the case of adjectives, in the case of adverbs, in the case of, so this is the new rule for the X bar schema or X bar theory, XP gives specifier of X, then X bar and the X bar here gives head and complement of X. And then he added more rules he added more rules. So instead of saying NP gives debt N, now it is NP gives optional debt and N bar, and N bar gives N and optional XP. So inshallah in syntax, in Engel 323, you will have more, uh, more details about the phrase structure rules. So Chomsky developed these rules into expert rules and he added some rules and then also he talked about movement uh, something like this the tp and then he started he talked about the movement like wh questions uh, active and passive and so on but as I said, we don't have time for this. Inshallah, in syntax, in Engel 3.23, you will study more uh, about this. So subject verb agreement, and then what agrees with what, then yes, no questions, 
that here we have originally the boy will sleep and when we ask the question uh, the boy will the boy sleep will moves you see here we have movement so t tense t moves from the tense phrase until the speak the uh, the beginning of the send the question and this is about also what we call subject auxiliary verb inversion so the t moves before the subject and the cp rule and then maybe we have something about wh words Yeah, sometimes like we say, is Nelly snoring? So here we have, instead of one movement, we have two movements. Originally, Nelly is snoring. Then, then here, the verb, the auxiliary verb is moves from V to T, V, the verb, to tense. And then it moves again from T to C, the complementizer to, to be the head of the complementizer or the speak of the complementizer, the complementizer to be at the beginning of the, of the question and it becomes a yes no question. Okay, WH questions, they are very similar except when we don't have, when we don't have, so this is Max will chase what? So originally, originally, originally in the deep structure, originally in the deep structure, the NP, the NP, the, the, the WH word, which is here, uh, this is, yeah, what? The WH word is in this place, Max will chase what? Then what moves to the spec of CP? And, we have the auxiliary subject auxiliary verb inversion like will max max will so max will becomes will max so what moves from the vp immediately to the speak cp or to the to, to, I mean to the to the to the head of cp and now here we have t the auxiliary verb moves from T uh, C bar. This, this is in case we have an auxiliary verb. If we don't have an auxiliary verb, we need do support. Do support. Like when we say, uh, Patty, Patty like which toys? So the WH word here, it is under D, that, the determiner of the NP, because it modifies toys, the noun, then we don't have, under tense, we don't have an auxiliary verb, but we have minus past, minus past, so this means Perry likes. <clears throat> and then, which toys here, this unit or moves, to the beginning of the CP. And then here, the tense minus past moves to the, uh, uh, to the, to the uh, head of C bar. And it makes the question, which toys we need do support? Which toys do support? This is called do support or do insertion. Because if we don't have an auxiliary verb, we we insert do or does in the present and did in the past. So here, which toys moves here and the uh, plus past, oh, sorry, minus past moves from T to uh, T in the, in, 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 in the uh, C of the C, C, C bar. And uh, we insert here because it is minus past, we insert do, we insert do because of uh, that toys subject. Okay. But in this case, don't forget, like we say, which toys, then we insert do, but here the subject is parry and like. Do, do agrees with what? 
with the subject or the object? The subject. Yes, so here we choose does. Which toys does Perry like? And something about universal grammar. Kamil, you want to say something? No, the question. No, doctor. Campbell, you raised your hand. So these are the rules. Okay, okay, no problem, Campbell. So these are the rules that uh, Chomsky and his colleagues started with. But here, as I said, due to, I mean, just we don't have enough time because we need the whole semester to finish this. And uh, in this case, we will not be able to take anything in semantics, but I, decided to stop here after, inshallah, next time Qais, next time uh, Qais will be presenting. Uh, uh, so after, after, after the excellent presentations uh, from Surah and Bushra and Noor, we expect something like this from you Qais, and you, inshallah you can and you will do this. So Qais, Ice will be talking about building phrase structure trees, building phrase structure trees, the, se the sentence and PVP and it and NP. Bushra and uh, Surah and uh, Noor uh, talked about this case. So you can add, you can mm -hmm. add more examples if you wish. Okay. And then you, you will talk about the infinity of language, like recursive rules, when we have recursive structure, like Qais said that, uh, John said that, that, uh, that, that Ali wonders that, and so on. This is called recursive grammar, yes. or when we have sentence VP, then CP, SVP, CP, SVP, NP, and so on. So we call this recursive grammar. I'm going to leave this to Qais. After, after this, uh, uh, after after uh, the after the lecture next time inshallah we will move to semantics so i i told ahlam ahlam al jamra ahlam uh, you will be uh, presenting the introduction of semantics yes okay so ahlam will be yeah Okay, so this is semantics. Ahlam, please be ready because I think Qais will take maybe 30 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, maybe 35, maybe 40. But please, uh, Ahlam, be ready next time, okay? Inshallah. And the, the meaning of language, semantics, just tell us the meaning of semantics. And this just, and speakers know about sentence meaning, the truth value. Until what? Until what, Ahlam? The first entailment? Until what page? Um, 136, until ambiguity and the principles of com uh, compositionality. Compositionality. Okay, that's fine. So you have this section, entailment and related notions. And Ahlam, just don't don't focus on every line. Okay? Okay. Just give us give us the main ideas. Give us the main ideas. Okay. So please be ready, be ready next time. The truth and semantics in general. Be ready next time, uh, Ahlam, and uh, inshallah, we will enjoy the presentations of Qais and Ahlam next time, and we will finish semantics, and we, uh, sorry, syntax, and we will start with semantics, inshallah. Do you have any questions? Any questions before, before we leave? Questions? No questions? Everything is good. Okay. So, so far I have Qais, page, uh, pages 93 to 95, Ahlam al-Jumra, introduction of chapter four, and Amina, Fani Mustafa, chapter four, idioms, and Yara al-Waqid, chapter four, metaphor. Please, if you are willing to take full mark in 
in participation and if you want to get three extra marks in the final please uh, be enthusiastic and uh, uh, pa and try to present something so okay we see so far this this is what we have so will be talking about, uh, about uh, semantics truth value and ambiguity uh, okay then semantics semantic rules no forget about semantic rules i'm not going to include this And then I need someone to talk about anomalous sentences and metaphor for one of you, I think. And metaphor, metaphors, idioms are occupied. Mahjouzat. We'll see. If we have time, maybe I, I'm going to ask someone to present lexical semantics for. Can I do that? For lexical semantics. Hamza, yes, you can. Just send me an email, okay? okay. Lexical semantics, Hamza, I want you to focus on lexical relations, Hamza, page 149. Forget, forget about the, the first pages, okay? Forget about uh, forget about uh, 146, 147 lexical semantics and the theories and the reference and the sense. I want you to focus on lexical relations, synonyms, antonyms, uh, and so on. Um, okay. Doctor, I'm going to you a lexical relation email. Really? I, I didn't write this note. لا دكتور بعت لك وحكيت لي اوكي حكيت لك شوف 149 لعند 151 يعني انا لي الريليشن اوكي اوكي ام سوري دونت دونت وري دونت وري سو فيرست كم فيرست سيرف واتس يور نيم تبارك وين فرد او يا يا تبارك اي ريمبر بس ميبي اي ديدنت اي اي ريبلاي تو يو رايت يا دكتور حكيت لك اي ويل تراي ان شاء الله انا راح اشرحهم 149 ل 151 اوكي اوكي سو ويت ا مينيت Tabarak, because I replied, I replied to your email, but I didn't write the note. No, doctor. We agreed that lexical relation. I will explain it all. Okay, so chapter four, lexical relations. What pages? Doctor, one hundred and forty-nine to one hundred and fifty-seven. 149 to 151. Yeah. So, okay, 151. Yeah, doctor. But I'm not doctor. I'm not in the semantics future. But I'm in the lexical relation. Okay. Yeah, this is what we need. I don't need to. Okay. Okay. So this is yours. And Hamza Mahroum. حمزة محروم I, I need to choose if we have time إن شاء الله we will maybe I will send you the presentation on email no 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 I want you to present in, in, in the meeting حمزة حمزة I, I'm going to choose something for you I remember now I want you, Hamza, to, to, to present this part, please. Hamza, theories of word meaning, page, theories of word meaning, page 147, and focus on reference and sense. Reference and sense. Reference and sense. So page, Hamza Mahro. Okay, doctor. Hamza will be chapter four, page 147, uh, sorry, 140, yeah, 147 to 140, to 150, or 140, to 149. And then Tabarak will be 149 to 151.
Okay. Okay, Doctor. In Allah. Bravo. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. So thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the day and have a nice weekend and be safe, take care and be safe. Thank you. Thank you for and thank you for the presenters. Really, you were amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Bravo, bravo. You did a great job. You're excellent. Inshallah, inshallah, I hope to see you in the MA program at Yarmouk University or maybe somewhere else in Europe, in the States, for all of you, inshallah. Good luck for all of you. Thank you, doctor. But you are really excellent and we are happy to have you in our department. Thank you so much.